Hi, what's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well today. This time, we're diving into a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to play your favorite PS1 games right on your Nintendo Switch. We'll be using the RetroArch emulator, and I'll also show you how to create a shortcut so you can launch your games directly from your Switch home screen, making it feel like they belong right alongside your other favorite titles. All right, without further ado, let's jump straight into the tutorial. Now that we're on the Nintendo Switch, make sure your console is already jailbroken, as we'll be running the RetroArch Homebrew app. If RetroArch isn't already installed on your Switch, let's go ahead and download and install it now. We'll also need to download a core so RetroArch can run PS1 games. To start, connect the Switch to the internet. Then, open the album to access the Homebrew applications. Launch the HB App Store and select the search icon. Type Retro and you'll see the RetroArch app. Let's select it and then press A to start the download. The app will automatically install after downloading. Once it's installed, press the Home button to return to the main menu. Now open the album again and scroll to the right until you see the RetroArch icon. Let's open RetroArch to set it up. This is a one-time setup. First, we need to download two cores to enable PS1 game support. Go to Load Core and scroll down to the Download a Core option. At the bottom, you'll find the two cores we need. Select the first core and start the download. Once finished, you'll see a hashtag icon on the right, showing it's installed. Next, download the second core listed below it. With both cores downloaded, press B to go back to the previous menu. Select Load Core again, scroll to the bottom, and now you'll see the two cores we just downloaded. We'll load the core labeled PPSSPP by highlighting it and pressing A. That completes the initial setup for RetroArch. Now, power off the switch, remove the SD card, and plug it into your computer. All right, first things first, we need to prepare the game file. You can find PS1 game archives on various websites. Just do a quick Google search. I already have a game ready to go here for the tutorial. Typically, these game files are in compressed formats, so let's extract this one first. Once extracted, you can delete the compressed file to keep things tidy. Inside the extracted folder, you'll usually see a couple of files, often with .bin and .q extensions. Some games might even have multiple .bin files. Next, we'll need an image to use as the shortcut icon for the game on the Switch home screen. This image has to be 256 by 256 pixels in size and saved as a .jpg file. I created a sample image in Canva, but feel free to use any image as long as it meets those requirements. Now, I'll go ahead and download this image. And we're good to go. Now, we'll download a tool called Switch Army Knife, which we'll use to generate an NRO forwarder file that we can install on the Switch. I'm already on the GitHub page for it, so let's scroll down to the Releases section and download the version that matches your Windows system type. I'll be downloading the 64-bit version here. Once downloaded, let's extract the files to get them ready. Finally, we'll need a prod.key file. I've added a link to this in the video description. I've already downloaded it here, so let's extract the prod.key file
and then we'll move it to the bin folder inside the switch army knife folder we just extracted. We need to do this, or the NRO forwarder won't work properly. All right, we have all the necessary files. Next, we're going to create an NRO forwarder file that will point to both RetroArch and the PS1 game we're going to play. First, let's copy the folder containing the PS1 game to the SD card that we just plugged into the computer. Create a new folder to place the game files in. You can place the folder anywhere on the SD card, but for this tutorial, I'm going to put it inside the RetroArch folder. Let's call the new folder ROMs, but feel free to name it whatever you like. Now go ahead and copy the game folder into the ROMs folder. Once that's done, let's open sak.exe, switch army knife, from the folder you've downloaded. Select NRO forwarder to start setting up the forwarder file. Here's how we configure the fields. For app name, enter the name of the game you want to appear on the home screen. For title ID, leave it as the default, or you can regenerate it by clicking the button next to it. For author and version, you can fill these out as you like, but I'm leaving them as default since they won't affect the game. Next, click Open JPG to select the image that will be the game icon on the home screen. Make sure the image is 256 by 256 pixels. Once selected, move down to the next section. In the NRO path field, we need to enter the path to the RetroArch NRO file. To find this, open Windows Explorer and navigate to your SD card. Go to the Switch folder, and there you should see the file RetroArchSwitch.nro. In the NRO path, you'll enter the path like this. To avoid any typing mistakes, you can just copy and paste the name folder and files directly. Now, let's complete the NRO forwarder setup. In the NRO path field, first type a forward slash, then the folder name, which is Switch. followed by another forward slash and the file name, retroarchswitch.nro. To avoid any typing mistakes, press F2 to highlight all the text, then make sure to include the .nro extension at the end. Double check that the path is correct before proceeding. Next, let's set the RetroArch core path. As before, we need to fill in the core file path and the CUE file path for the PS1 game. The core path is located inside the RetroArch folder in Cores. And the core file we need is named PCSX RearMed. All right, now let's fill in the core path first. For the game path, go to the RetroArch folder, then ROMs, find your game folder, and select the CUE file for the game. If your game folder is in a different location, just adjust the path accordingly. Once both paths are filled in correctly, click Create NRO Forwarder. The process will take a few seconds, and when it's done, you'll see a notification like this. The newly created NRO Forwarder file will appear in the SAK folder. Here it is. Now that the NRO Forwarder file is ready, the last step is to install it on the switch. Eject the SD card from your computer, plug it back into the switch, and power the device on. Now we're back on the switch, in the Homebrew menu. To install the forwarder file we just created, we'll be using the DBI application. First, connect your switch to the computer using a USB Type-C cable. Once connected, open the DBI application. In DBI, select Run MTP Responder. On your computer, navigate to the Switch folder in the File Manager. Open the folder labeled 5-SD Card Install. Now, copy the NRO forwarder file we created earlier into this folder to install it on the Switch. 
After the file is copied, you'll see a message on DBI about the installation process. If you see any error messages, don't worry, just ignore them. Next, return to the home screen. You'll notice a new game icon has been added with the exact same image we set earlier on the computer. Let's try launching it to see if it works. All right, the game runs perfectly. And that's it. Now you can enjoy playing PlayStation 1 games directly from your Nintendo Switch home screen. I hope this tutorial was helpful and easy to follow. If you found this video useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.